G'day guys, today we are going to try and get Rocknix installed and working on our R36S and see how it compares with ArcOS. Let's get into it. We're over on the Windows 10 desktop now and the first thing I want to do is back up the SD card that came with my R36S. Just using a cheap USB 2 SD card reader and just putting the SD card in and putting it into the laptop. When I ask you to format, click cancel, it's very important. I'll make a new folder on my computer and I'll call it R36S backup and if I go over to this PC we can see we've got my boot partition from the R36S and we've got the easy ROMs. I'm not too worried about the easy ROMs but I do want to back up my boot partition. So just opening it up, going to select all, control C to copy or you can right click on it, go to copy, go over to the folder I created on my computer R36S backup and I'll paste it in there. It didn't take long since the files aren't very big. So now we've got them backed up, I will safely eject my R36 SSD card and I want to keep that somewhere safe just in case Rocknix OS is uh, not very good. So now we've backed it up, we want to download Rocknix OS and a few tools required for flashing. I'm going to open up Google Chrome and we're just going to type in R36 S space R-O-C-K-N-I-X and it's the top link, Rocknix Wiki. We want to scroll down gives you some basic info about it. I want to keep scrolling where it says notes installation. It has latest and the red uh, date or the date that the last version was uploaded. I want to click on that. It'll take us to a GitHub page. Just scroll down. We want to select our game console which is R36S, the top one for me at the time of uh, filming this. And on the right hand side it says download package. We just want to click that. While that's downloading, we will need a few things to be able to extract it and also write it to our fresh SD card. Going back to Google, I'm going to type in Rufus, R-U-F-U-S, the top link, rufus.ie. I'm going to scroll down a little bit under downloads. I like to download the portable version since it doesn't need installing. So we'll just click on that. And while they're both downloading, there's one more thing that you may not have already, and that's 7-zip. Go back to Google, type in 7, Z-I-P, the top result, 7-zip.org and just download the correct version for your PC. So it'll be the top one, 64-bit, or 32-bit x86. Or if you've got ARM Windows, it'll be that one as well. Once everything's finished downloading, we'll close off Chrome and open up our Downloads folder. So in our Downloads folder, if you haven't already, make sure you install 7-zip, because you will need it to extract the Rocknix archive. To install it, all you have to do is double-click on 7-zip installer, uh, click Next, and click Finish. It's very, very simple, straightforward. So with 7-zip installed, just right click on our Rocknix download, go to 7-zip, go to Extract to Folder. Once it's finished extracting, you should have a new folder, Rocknix-RK3326, and inside should be a image file. It's a little over 2 gig. So that's all the files ready. Now we want to insert our fresh SD card into our SD reader. Again, this isn't the SD card that came with the R36S, I am keeping that as a backup since you will lose all the files on the SD card when writing the new image. So just putting the SD card into the SD reader, into the computer. Go back to the Downloads folder and double click on Rufus. From here, make sure you have the correct drive selected. So at the very top it says Device. Mine is a 32 gig micro SD. So there it is there, it's the correct one, eDrive. Where it says Disk or ISO Image, keep it as that. On the right of that, click Select. You want to go down to the download location where you downloaded Rocknix, open up the folder, and you want to select the image file that we extracted. It's around 2 gig again. Leave everything else as default and just click start. Click OK. You will lose all files on this SD card. Once it's finished, we can just click close. And on the left hand side, we should have a new folder called Rocknix. Open that up. And there's our boot drive. Similar to ArcOS, there are different screen files required for different screen revision consoles. So don't be surprised if the first time you boot this up, there's nothing on the screen. We will get into that shortly. So now it's finished and we've confirmed it. We will safely eject, just right click and eject. Just unplugging it and removing the micro SD. So over on our R36S now, just inserting the fresh SD card we've installed into the right hand side slot or slot one. And let's power it on. Again, I'm not expecting anything on the screen since I haven't changed any of the screen files and I doubt that these stock ones will work. So it's been about a minute now and not much has happened on the screen. Nothing's come up. It has just been a black screen. So I think we will hard power off the unit by holding down the power button and I will eject the SD card. 
and we'll go back over to our Windows 10 PC and copy over the correct screen files. Over on our Windows 10 PC again, just inserting the SD card into the SD reader and putting it into the laptop. And our Rocknix drive has showed up, 2 gig, perfect. We'll minimize this and we will open Chrome once more. So if you've backed up your original Arc OS SD card files, then there's a handy tool that'll let us know which screen panel we have. If you haven't, don't worry, you will just have to go through each panel, unfortunately. It doesn't take very long. So to find the screen testing tool, we're just going to type in Arc OS space R36S. I want to go to the top link, AEOLUS GitHub. I want to scroll all the way down to the very bottom. There's a link. It says you can check which screen you're using with this tool. I'm going to click that. Now on this page, we want to click choose file. Go to your R36S backup folder that we created at the start of the video and you want to select RK3326-R35S-Linux.dtv and click identify my screen and it should show you what screen type you have. For me it was panel 4 so now we know that I'll go back to Google. I want to type in Rocknix R36S once again. Go to the top link, the Rocknix wiki. I want to scroll down. And under the download link, it says new displays, R36S of year 2024. There is a link that says download a MIPI panel.dtbo. There, so click there. We want to scroll down a little bit. And this is where you would download the correct panel. So for me, it's panel 4. If you are unable to identify which panel you have, probably start with panel 4. And if that doesn't work, try 3, 2 or 1. So to download it, just click on it. Once it's downloaded, we can close out of Chrome. Open up our downloads folder. There is our MIPI panel.dtbo. We want to rename it so you can just click on it once so it highlights it. We want to delete the R36S uh, extension and just make sure it's called MIPI panel.dtbo. Press yes, you want to rename. And then we will copy that. You can do Control C or right click on it, go copy. Go to our Rocknix SD card that we just installed. Go to the overlays folder. We want to paste it in here. Again, if panel 4 or the panel that you tried didn't work, you would do the same steps again, uh, overwriting this file we just copied. So you could delete it first or you could just copy uh, the new one over to it and overwrite. Once that's done, we want to right click and safely eject once more. So we've got our SD card with Rocknix OS installed with the correct screen panel type this time. Putting it into our R36S in slot 1 once again, which is the right hand side slot, and power it on. Straight away we do have the Rocknix logo on the screen, which is a great sign. And we've finally booted into Rocknix OS. It took about three minutes with the Rocknix logo on the screen and about another one or two minutes, just a black screen after that. So be patient, don't panic, just give it time. All up about three or four minutes, maybe five minutes, and you should eventually get to the Pico 8 screen. So now we know it works, we want to get some games onto it. Unfortunately, this is not as easy as Arc OS since the ROMs partition is EXT4 and it's not readily readable or writable in Windows. There are ways to do it, but they're not very user friendly and we won't cover it in this guide. Another option is to copy all your games to a flash drive and connect it to the R36S console through the USB OTG port at the bottom down here and then use the built-in file manager to slowly copy all the files over. Again, that's a bit too tedious and we won't cover it in today's video. The easiest way is to use a second SD card in slot 2 for ROMs. That is the method we'll be using today. So we want to power off our console. You can just press start, go down to quit, and shut down system, and yes. I'll leave the boot SD in here, and I will have a second SD card that we'll put into our SD reader and back into our Windows 10 computer. Back on our Windows 10 computer now, I've put another fresh SD card into my SD reader. This will be used for ROMs. Make sure it is empty since we will be formatting it and you will lose all the files. I'm just putting it into my USB port. And for me, it's eDrive. And it's a 16 gig, just a cheap no-name SD card. And it's already empty, but just in case it isn't, you can right-click on the correct drive. Again, make sure you have the correct SD card selected. Go down to Format. And we want to do XFAT just so we have large file support. Leave everything else as default, no volume labels, not needed, and click start. Click yes or OK. And done. Now it should definitely be empty and it's formatted as EXT FAT. I'm going to go down to the bottom, right click safely eject. We'll go back to our R36S console. So back on our R36S now, just uh, removing the SD card from the reader, putting it into slot 2, which is the left hand side slot. Making sure our Rocknix boot SD is in slot 1 still, we haven't taken that out. We'll power it on. Once the console's booted, our second SD card should be configured for ROMs. Before we power off the system, we do want to do a few things. We're going to press the start button. We want to go down to system settings. 
and want to go down to devices R36S, R35S and toggle that on. Press B to go back. It'll ask us to restart, click yes. Once it's finished resetting, we want to press start again. Go down to controller and Bluetooth settings, press A. Controller mapping, press A, press OK. Let's hold down A button for a few seconds. Now we want to assign all the keys. So D-pad up, down, left, right, start and select. Button A, button B, button X, button Y, L1, R1, L2, R2, our left thumb in, right thumb in, which is the joystick, just press it in. Left analog up, down, left, right. Hot key, which is our FN key or function key. And the right analog up, down, left, and right. Press OK. And that's that done. We can press B to go back, go down to quit, and shut down system. Once it's powered off, we will eject SD card 2, which is our ROMs SD card, and we'll put it back into our SD card reader, and move back over to our Windows computer. Just inserting the SD reader into the computer, and if we open up our SD card now, it has a ROMs folder. Inside are all the systems. So from here, it's very similar to Arc OS or Emulation Station, if you use that. We just want to copy our ROMs over to the correct folders. So I'll do that and we'll come back. I'll finish copying my ROMs over, so once more, just going down to the bottom, right-clicking, Safely eject. Back over to our R36S now, just inserting our ROMs SD into slot 2. Again, keeping Rocknix inserted into slot 1. We'll power it on. It's finished booting, let's take a look around. So we got Pico 8, that was included. The one game doesn't actually open, I'm guessing it's missing files. Favorites folder, tools. Does have Portmaster, which is great. Music player, just be aware. Uh, when I opened this, I was not able to exit out of it. I did have to hard reset. I tried all key combinations, it just didn't work. Scum VM, again, no games in here. I've got our test PSP game, DS game, 64 game, and a Game Boy game. Let's start with the Game Boy game, Super Mario Land. When you go to open, it wants to know if you want to start a new game or start autosave. It's a nice little feature. So that actually took eight seconds to open. I was timing on my camera, but it does work fine once it's open. Full speed, no lag. To exit out of it, it's start and select twice. It did take three, almost four seconds to exit back to the main screen as well. That's one of the main issues I've encountered with Rocknix. We'll go back to the main menu. We'll try our 64 game Zelda. So it did take around eight or nine seconds to load once again. So the load times are not great on this OS. And out of the box, 64 performance is pretty bad. Massive lag spikes, the sound's glitching. You can already see it's running at a slow frame rate just uh, to enter the name. Again, it did take three to four seconds to go back to the ROMs menu. I think next we'll try Nintendo DS, just got Mario Kart. That loaded in around three seconds, that was pretty good. Similar to Arc OS, you can press L2 and R2 to change the screen modes. I do really like the layout options on Rocknix better than the default ArcOS ones. So you can go top and bottom, left and right, and obviously full screen toggle. I prefer that over the ArcOS default uh, big screen and then tiny corner thumbnail. And DS obviously runs fine. It runs fine on ArcOS as well. Might be a few lag spikes, but nothing too bad. We'll quit out of this and try our PSP game. So PSP seems fine. There are a few lag spikes, which I didn't notice on ArcOS. But overall, doesn't seem too much worse than ArcOS. I have tried more demanding games like God of War, and yeah, it's the same unplayability as ArcOS, so you're not getting any extra performance using this. One thing worth noting is when you press the left thumbstick in, bring up the PPSSPP menu, you can see everything is very crushed and cramped. It is all there, it is just very, uh, yeah, squished. We'll quit out of this and wrap it up. So overall, I'm not a huge fan of Rocknix. I'd much prefer Arc OS. It takes around 30 seconds for the console to boot from Power Off versus the few seconds for Arc OS. It takes around eight seconds to open a game and about three seconds to actually close a game versus Arc OS's almost instant. It's maybe one or two seconds, but not really noticeable. And it is a lot harder to transfer ROMs over if you're using a single SD card setup on a Windows computer. It's not all bad. It does have Moonlight installed by default, which is great if you like game streaming, but you can install it on ArcOS through Portmaster. And I much prefer the Nintendo DS drastic screen layouts on Rocknix versus the default ArcOS ones. 
I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.